I want to show you something. This gentleman, Vern Brownell, is the successor to Jordy Rose of D-Wave Computing fame. You've all heard of Jordy Rose. This fellow is his successor. You probably remember from your, your physics classes um, that, that uh, a quantum mechanical object, if it's disturbed, you can, you can, it's called freeze it out or it becomes classical. So um, every quantum computer has uh, as its building block a thing called a qubit. A qu he goes on to explain the cult of quantum, which is what it is. This is an electromagnetic reality. They have created a religion of quantum technology. At this level of existence, the only quantum factor is you and me. We have limited free will. That's the topic for another story, another video, but for now, and I will make my case in later videos, that we live in a scripted reality, that the ones who control the scripts control the reality. I want you to listen here now to what he has to say. Uh, an air vacuum, so there's this coffee can sized environment that has this um, incredibly low temperature in this vacuum, and this magnetic vacuum that has this um, incredibly low temperature in this vacuum, and this magnetic vacuum, or in this vacuum, and this magnetic vacuum, or in this vacuum, and this magnetic vacuum. In this vacuum, in this magnetic vacuum, or in this vacuum, in this magnetic vacuum, or in this vacuum, in this magnetic vacuum, a magnetic vacuum. Revelation 17. They will make war against the Lamb, and the Lamb will triumph over them, because he is the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings. And he will be accompanied by his called and chosen and faithful ones. Then the angel said to me, The waters you saw where the prostitute was seated are peoples and multitudes and nations and tongues. And the ten horns, ten, gematria, yod, seed, and the beast that you saw will hate the prostitute. They will leave her desolate and naked and will eat her flesh and burn her with fire. For God has put it into their hearts to carry out his purpose by uniting to give their kingdom to the beast until the words of God are fulfilled. And the woman you saw is the great city that rules over all the kings of the earth. It is probably among the purest and most magnetic vacuum. It is probably this magnetic vacuum. This magnetic vacuum. This magnetic vacuum. It is. They have made her naked. We can see her. But in looking at her, we are forced to look at ourselves. They despise her. These words were written over 2,000 years ago.
these words. And they despise her. The writer of this book despised her. She is the collective human subconscious. The entire point of the exercise here that we call life is to differentiate from her. To come out of her, my people, so that you share not in her sins and her plagues. Goddard called this reality a play. I call it a program. But whatever you call it, we have some growing up to do. She is a prostitute because we made her one. Mankind, and by mankind I mean the masculine, has taken a massive dump in her crotch. They started this way back in Egypt, actually in India before. This place is an incubator for consciousness. It's an incubator for masculine consciousness. Logic, reason, rationality. But logic and reason and rationality, the left serial processor in your head, will take you only so far. You need the right feminine hemisphere to inform and mediate the worst sins that the left hemisphere is capable of. Because when she doesn't, when she is full of trash, she will support you in whatever you do. She will take you down any road you want to go. And we have gone down some horribly dark roads in the last several thousand years. And the ones that do the writing, the ones that do the scripting, the scribes, the ones that Christ held in contempt, and justifiably so, are responsible. And there are those among us who have more to answer for than others. People have absolutely no idea how late in the program we are. We become capable of contemplating and understanding these things. And therefore, it is time for the curtain to come down on the show. In the time that remains, the single most important thing is how we treat one another. As the collective human subconscious, which is Leviathan, the beast out of the abyss, that's another thing they changed, was all those pronouns. Leviathan is not a him, it's a her. She comes out of the water. That's feminine. There will be another beast on the land. What they do with this V way of computing is they have a closet sized 
doorway and opening in the back of that black cube. They super cool a nickel alloy case because super cooling nickel alloy changes its magnetic permeability and permittivity. And in so doing, they create a little area of counter space or are able to drop the ass end of that black cube inside that closet into the ether and to program the reality directly. They despise the feminine. A torus is a T-O-R-U-S. It's a magnetic toroidal field. It is feminine. And yet we were given a torus, a T-A-U-R-U-S, a bull that is masculine. They have inverted every damn thing. And they despise the feminine. And they're eating her flesh and burning her with fire. If you go up to your bar here, know how many thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of hits you'll end up getting. They are munching away on her. And yet we're told that we have to eat of the flesh and drink of the blood of the Christ. Maybe that's faith over logic. I'm still working on that one. But I do know this, that everything happens for a reason, that what they mean for ill, the Father means for good. And it may very well be true in the end that we are little tiny fractals, limited, constricted, little expressions of God, all individuated here and striving to be born. Christ did say it was the beginning of birth pangs. But I told God over 20 years ago, I resigned as God. I didn't want a job. I was tired of trying to make people do things and uh, they didn't want to do or spin them and control them, cajole them, make them like me, manipulate them. I was just tired of it. It's a really bad day at work. I told him I didn't want the damn job. Anybody runs for president should not be elected. They should be draftees. So I'm in no rush to be God. And it may be true, we are destined eventually to become the sons of God. Which would explain Enoch and they went into the daughters of men and yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, the Christed ones are the only ones that are going to be left among the men. There are a lot of things I do not understand. But I have come to understand some parts of this script we've been given. And they're constantly attempting to massage it. And in the end, they will fail, as they've failed every other time before and every time hence. What is important and what is to come is how we treat one another. That we love one another. 
that we are kind to one another. And that we forgive one another for everything. Because if you're listening to me blather on on this channel, you have lived just about every life there is. And you have committed just about every sin there is to commit. And we are going to be coming right smack dab into that awareness very soon. And when that happens, and I've had some years to come to this, those who have not had years to come to this, I have tripped and fallen, and I have been broken on that stone already. But the ones that it lands on, they are going to be absolutely crushed. Whether good people or bad people, they will be crushed. And when that happens, they are going to need us. They have no clue. They're going to need us. They're going to need our strength. Whatever level of understanding we possess. And they're going to need our love and forgiveness. I imagine in days to come we will hear a lot of confessions. Be loving and be forgiving. Because if there is one thing that we cannot afford right now, is to be the unforgiving servant. And I am the worst hypocrite you'll listen to all fucking year. Because I suck at forgiveness. I hold all those hatreds and all those animosities really close. Because it keeps me warm at night. And it is hard to kick against the goads. It is hard to turn and be healed. It is hard to look in the mirror at your own reflection. You be kind. You don't argue with anybody. You don't oppose anybody. You stand for things, not against things. Whatever you oppose, you eventually end up becoming. It's just the way things operate. You stare into the abyss and it stares into you. And you stare long enough, you will become what you behold. And do not call conspiracy all that they call conspiracy. And do not dread what they dread. Why? That kills me to say that because I'm an old conspiracist for 40 plus years. Ever since I watched Kennedy's head turn into a blown up watermelon. It's a program. Everything plays out exactly how it's supposed to play out. And it's all done for our benefit, although the horror and the pain and the suffering, it sure as hell doesn't feel like it most days. But it's in the experience. It's in the experience. And the feminine is about giving us that experience. You don't worship the feminine. She came after Adam from his rib, from the electric rib, the magnetic loss of inertia on the dielectric. You don't worship the feminine, but I wouldn't worship the masculine either. The good and the evil is born in the left male hemisphere. 
she, the feminine, whether you're talking about the earth or whether you're talking about your subconscious, will grow whatever seed you plant in her. And Christ said there was a bad seed planted here. He did not say that there was a bad ovum, there was a bad egg. Excuse me. He did not say that there was a bad ovum planted here. He said there was a bad seed. And we have thoroughly trashed the feminine. And we need to think about the seeds that we are planting every day. In every way. The conversations we have with ourselves. The images we call forth in our minds. When we remember something painful or something joyful. We need to let go of the hate. And we need to do it pretty damn quick. Anyway, be good. We'll talk again.